Today, I'm going to give you the answer to just about any programming question. Welcome back, everybody. Today's video is inspired by a lot of questions I get from new programmers. Because when you're first starting out, you're trying to cover a lot of ground and you're you want to make sure you're hearing a lot of opinions from a lot of different people and you want to make sure that you're doing it right. You want to make sure you're on the right track. You want to make sure you're doing things in the right way. And so I get a lot of questions about what's the right way to implement a tree? What's the right way to implement a hash table? What's the right programming language? What's the right IDE? What's the right set of tools for a particular problem? You get the idea. And today I'm going to give you the answer to all of these questions. But first, this video is brought to you by all of the wonderful people who support this channel on Patreon. Those of you who are new, Patreon is where you can get access to the source code for all my videos videos and access to my virtual office hours that I hold once a month, usually at the end of the month. So a big thanks to everyone that does support this channel. And now back to the question at hand. And that is, what's the answer to all of these questions? And the answer is, it depends. What's the best operating system? Well, it depends. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what you care about. What's the best data structure? Well, it depends. It totally depends on what you're going to do with it. And if you think about it, this really makes sense because if there was just one programming language that was best, if there was one best programming language or one best data structure, wouldn't we all just migrate to using that and we ditch all the others? We simply just wouldn't have so much diversity. We wouldn't have so many different data structures. We wouldn't have so many different algorithms, so many different operating systems, languages, etc. if there were was just one that was best for everything. But in computing, there rarely is a best, well, anything. Nearly all of these questions have complicated answers or at the very least nuanced answers. So the message of this video really is be careful when you hear things that are really dogmatic. When someone has a serious ax to grind and they're like, this is the right way, the only way, the best way. If they say you should never use global variables or never use go-tos or never use C or never use C++ or whatever, these statements are nearly always wrong at least some of the time. And maybe a secondary message to this video is that you really just need to stop worrying so much about finding the right way to do things or the best way to do something. Now, I'm not saying there isn't a right answer to these questions for your specific problem problem for your specific scenario, there might be, there might definitely be a best answer. Of course, in some cases, there might be two or three or four good answers that could all work. But you notice that I'm getting specific here. Generally, the right answer depends on your project, your team, your your goals, what you're trying to accomplish, your business model. Maybe it depends on what you know as a team, what you like. Are you optimizing for the computer speed or are you optimizing for your programming speed? Or maybe your number one goal is robustness and correctness. Maybe you're targeting a specific audience and that audience typically uses a particular operating system, in which case that may skew the answer. So all of these factors are going to help you decide what is the right answer for your team, your project right now? So broad, general, simplistic answers are almost always wrong. Specific answers for specific projects are often right, at least for now. You always wanna keep your mind open because often the right thing to do today may, be, may change, may be different tomorrow. So how do you find these specific answers? Because even though the answer generally is it depends, if you stop there, it's gonna get really annoying really quick. You gotta have more to say than it depends. So here are a few tips. The first is to focus on getting experience and diverse experience. Pick up multiple languages, learn a wide range of data structures and algorithms, experience different operating systems, take a look at different APIs and different open source projects. And of course, just look at different programming styles because seeing a wide range of styles, approaches, tools and techniques are going to give you a better idea of what's available, what you have to choose from, and that's definitely a really good place to start. Now, second tip is whenever you're learning something new, don't just learn that thing or learn how something works, focus on strengths and weaknesses. If you're learning about arrays and linked lists, I mean, naturally, the first thing is how does this thing work? You got to understand how it works. And while that may seem obvious, some students blow right past that phase and just memorize a couple of things and don't actually understand how the mechanisms work. So definitely in your project, it's not just about getting your project working so you can get a B on that class project. You really do need to understand how it works. But once you understand how the mechanism works, then you wanna look at trade-offs. You wanna look at strengths, you wanna look at weaknesses. Your goal needs to be thinking, when would I use this? Why would I use this? Why would this be, when is it fast? When is it slow? When would I use this over something else? 
And then of course, are there ways that I can use this same idea in different ways to solve different problems? And the overarching theme here, I hope you're picking up on it, is trying to better understand how things work. You wanna always be pushing to better understand how hardware systems work, how software systems work, how programming styles work. And of course, you all know, if you've been watching this channel very long, that I love low level stuff. But this is just like in woodworking, you know, the more you understand your tools, the better you can put them to good use to solve different problems. Same thing is going on here. The better you understand how things work under the hood, the better specific decisions you're going to be able to make in your projects moving forward. And this is going to be true whether you're doing embedded systems, web development, or writing your own operating system. So be sure to pay attention in those low-level classes that all the other kids say aren't going to matter. You know, they say, I'm never going to use this. You're going to use this. This is going to help you understand how things work. Definitely you want to pay attention because you want to understand things like assembly language and computer architecture and compilers and, and programming languages and operating systems. You want to understand how all these pieces really work. And as your understanding of how they work continues to improve, just watch your decisions get better. And don't be surprised if more and more of the answers that you start giving to other people when they ask you questions start with, well, it depends. So I hope this advice is helpful. If it is, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Also, if you're interested in more discussion about the the approach, how you approach learning to program, consider checking out my course on Thinkific. Subscribe so you don't miss next week's video. And until then, I'll see you later.